English is now a truly global language. There are around 375 million native speakers all over the world, and an incredible 1.5 billion people learn it as a second, third, or fourth language. It has become the common language of business, international politics, and the internet. It is hardly surprising then that when people think of languages in the UK, they only think of English. After all, almost 92% of the population speak it as their first language. And although the rest speak their native tongue at home, English is still their first language at work or at school. But did you know that English isn't the only language native to Britain? In fact, the UK is home to several other indigenous languages. Morning, Ryan is Anam Dum. I August thought Kupla Fokal Gwelga Gum. Tommy Magoni in Oxford. Is Monlomon Kohar, Mar Kohar Goholi Ne, August thought Lawn Korja a Gumon Shop, Wakas Lydia. Is Misha Dunuka Gling, August Hagalikakum. Hami Dai Hitsun, Rukami Aunson Innernish, a Hokami Aunson Ustiches. Hami Furukanish Aunson Oxford. Carolyn Dui. Dwi'n siarad Cymraeg. Dwi'n dod o Loegr, ond dwi wrth fy modd yn medru siarad Cymraeg, achos mae hi'n iaith hen iawn ac hardd iawn. Well, uh, Barney o fi, um, Trigus o fi'n uh, Prothea. Um, mi o wo cawsl cynnwyc. Uh, mi o ddylathus dy ddysgu cynnwyc nans i'w uh, chweig uh, flyddyn. Most of these languages have their roots in Celtic culture. The Celts are thought to have arrived in Britain around 750 BCE, and people have been speaking a variety of Celtic dialects ever since. But before the Anglo-Saxons arrived in the 5th century, these languages were much more widespread. Over the last 1,500 years, English has grown and developed, spreading across the country and replacing the ancient tongues in all but the most remote regions. Today, around 60,000 people speak Scottish Gaelic. Most of these live in the highlands or on the islands off the northwestern coast. This region of Scottish Gaelic speakers is known as the Gaeltacht, and you can see the language in the area's names and signs. Thanks to Scottish emigration in the 17th and 18th centuries, Scottish Gaelic communities have developed in Canada too. The closest language to Scottish Gaelic is Irish, or Gaelga, a language still spoken in large parts of the Republic of Ireland, especially in the West, and in some areas of Northern Ireland too. Irish is still very much alive here. It is the first official language of the Republic, and while there are only around 80,000 native speakers, almost everybody has some knowledge of the language. It has grown north of the border too, with around 10% of the population speaking it regularly. Irish and Scottish Gaelic are both Goidelic languages, but this is only one of two groups of Celtic languages in the UK. The other is the Britonic family of languages, which includes Welsh and Cornish in the UK, as well as Breton in northern France. In Wales, around 560,000 people speak Welsh, which is almost 20% of the population. The language is particularly common in the north and northwest, and in some towns, the majority of the population is Welsh-speaking. In cities like Cardiff, the language isn't quite as popular, with just over 12% of residents speaking it. But even here, Welsh language schools have become very common, with around 40% of 5 to 15-year-olds having some Welsh. The Cornish language is similar to Welsh, but far fewer people speak it. The last native speaker died over 240 years ago, 
and the language was declared extinct in the 19th century. It lived on only in the region's place names, many of which take their names from the Cornish words for house, hill, and cove. In recent years, however, it has made a comeback. Today, around three to five hundred people speak it fluently. It is even taught in some schools and is especially popular with young people like Barney and Jowdy. I think it's important to, to keep speaking Cornish, to keep it alive, because it, it's all around us. Um, you say everyone in Cornwall is a Cornish speaker, you can't give directions uh, without speaking a bit of Cornish. It's in the place names and the street names. Um, and so it's, it's very much a part of what makes us distinct, unique, um, and why wouldn't you want to celebrate that? Minority languages like these aren't unique to the UK. Many countries have regional languages that were once widely spoken but have slowly been replaced by more dominant languages. It is a trend that is continuing around the world. In fact, experts predict that around 50% of the world's 6,500 languages could be extinct by the end of the century. But the recent growth of languages like Gaelic, Welsh and even Cornish show that you don't have to sacrifice one language to speak another. People in these places, and in other parts of the country too, have fought to keep their local language alive, often because it is an important part of their identity. Language can provide a unique link to our culture and heritage. And in an era when literally thousands of languages are dying out, that is something worth keeping.